Greetings, Professional Epi here with DubSpot.com. In this week's Ableton Live tutorial, we're going to take a look at some mixing techniques. In particular, we're going to look at the utility plugin and how it can be used to give separation for the different elements in your song. So the example we're working with here is a track I'm currently working on. And it's a simple four on the floor kick drum part with some nice analog synthesizers that I recorded. Uh, bass synth and then I invited my friend over to collaborate with me and he laid down some guitar and bass parts and we got a reversed guitar chord here that introduces this delayed guitar part okay and then about the halfway point there's a breakdown and then a whole bunch of elements come in so we're gonna talk about the utility plugin most of you are probably familiar with it. It's great for if you've already got a volume automation on a track and you want to bring the level of that entire track up or down. You just adjust the gain here. Okay, you can also go through and uh, if you have something that you recorded in the left and right channels, you want to swap them so that the left is now in the right, etc. Or if you want to make it completely in one side, etc. There's a pan option here, but this width feature is what we're talking about. So when you're mixing, like let's take a look at what's going on here. We've got a lot happening. We got this arpeggiating synth sound. All right, we've also got these lush synthesizer notes happening. We've got a bass synth that's happening. We've got these cosmic bells different ones in each ear and then we've got sort of a U2 style bass line here we've got a New Order style more melodic melodic bass parts and these guitar chords as well as the drums and it starts to get a little bit busy so what you can do is you can give some separation for all these different elements by adjusting how wide they are in the mix and you do that with the utility plugin. So let's take a look here. So basically we'll start with the bass and I put a utility plugin on the bass and I have the width set to 20%. So this is essentially a mono part. It's just got a little bit of width. It's going 20% wide which means it's mainly residing in the center of your mix. And then if we look at the higher part bass, that goes out to 40% wide. So by giving it a little separation, it stands out from that other bass part, yet it gets out of the way of these lush synths, which go 100% wide. They don't have any sort of plug-in on them. And the arpeggiated synth, I put some sidechain compression that's, that sidechains it to the kick as well as the high-end bass part, so that it gives me a little bit more of this high melodic bass part will, will, will peek through when that plays here if I go to that arpeggiated synth group you can see the high bass the when that level goes above the threshold it kicks the compressor in for that arpeggiated synth just wanted to hear that melodic new order bass line part a little bit more in my mix okay so then I have a different width set here for this guitar feedback chord. It's set to 75% wide, but then it's also interestingly sent out to a reverb that's going through this audio effects rack I've created of a number of different auto pans set to different rates. And then I use the utility plugin after that to bring the whole thing down by about 6 dBs. Yes, I could have turned them down here individually, but I just slapped it on here and turned the whole thing down by 6. This is essentially the same as turning this down 6 dBs. Right? Not necessarily, but it is what you can use the utility plugin for. Alright, so if you have a lot of parts going and they're all the same width, they're going to be competing with each other. There's a perceptual shift that happens when you change the width. So you can hear there's a lot of elements right now but they're, you can hear them clearly. So we just brought in this pick guitar. OK, 
Okay, so maybe I'll adjust the width. That's set at 75%, which was the same as those guitar chords. So I'm just gonna make it a little less wide at 65%. And that's just gonna give it just a little bit more separation from that other element. All right? So when you're mixing, remember you've got your arrangement, choosing when the parts come in the song, so if there's stuff that gets really busy and you can't hear things clearly, experiment with cutting different parts out. You also have the frequency aspect where if you have a bass part that's taking up your low end, if you have other parts that you don't need the bass frequencies for, you can roll off the low end on there. And then you also have the panoramic aspect, the left-right spectrum. And by using the utility plugin and adjusting the width setting, you can help the different elements of your song stand apart from each other and be heard clearly in the mix. I'm Professor Nalepa with Dubspot.com. It's been a tutorial on some mixing techniques. Have fun with it and see you next week. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.